The Ryan Reese Show from Southern California. This is The Ryan Reese Show. Post your questions using at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Are you ready? All right, all right. It's going down this Saturday night. I'm stoked to be in studio with Sean McKeon and Scott Salamant. We're over here at uh, the Calvary Chapel Golden Springs. We are here actually uh, um, for the holidays, for Christmas and New Year's and all that good stuff. But I've been watching the news, and as you guys have been watching the news and social media and everything that's going on, it seems like things are moving so quickly. And I know every time we're on the show, we're like, man, things are moving quicker now. But now we're here again, and things are moving quickly with the news, uh, current events and things that are going on. But as... Uh, as I've been speaking at different churches uh, here at Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar as well, talking to people inside the church, outside the church, and just seeing like the, 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 the church culture and following some of my friends that, that do ministry as well and some of the videos that they're, they're putting up on uh, social media, um, asking people these, these questions. It really has been stirring inside of me um, to, to write out a bunch of, uh, of questions that I want to ask you guys, and I want to chime in as well because... You know, what I'm watching going on in culture, and I'm sure you as well, because Scott, you work with the youth here, and you do many other things as a pastor at Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar. You as well, uh, uh, Sean McKeon as well. But um, what I'm noticing, and I don't think there's this is anything new. You guys have been in the church a, a long time, Scott, since the 80s as well. But I don't know if it's anything new, because there's always people going sideways within the church, right? They start listening to some funny doctrine or going to churches that don't really teach the Bible, um, saying, you know, motivational messages. I mean, anything could come off the stage and for 30 minutes to an hour in a church, and people are coming to receive whatever this person on the stage, this pastor, is, or, or someone in leadership that is uh, giving, and they're taking that as, in, as its truth, and they're applying it to their life. And if it's not biblical and if it's not sound doctrine, then what do you have? You have people taking random information, feel good stuff, motivational stuff, or false doctrine, and they're applying it to their life like it's truth. And I was just listening to Timothy this morning, the first Timothy and second Timothy, and as Paul is writing to him, you know, the thing that kept ringing through my, my head is that sound doctrine. You know, pre, you know, he's encouraging Timothy as a young guy to go out and continue to, 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 you know, to minister and do what he's called to do. And, and, but he kept saying, preach the sound doctrine that we have, mm. that we have learned. So with all that said, I just, as I'm talking to people, I just feel like there's so many people in the world that are calling themselves Christians, but they're truly not Christians. And how can I judge or decide if someone is a Christian or not? Well, you have to look at what the Bible says. And I just go off what the Bible says. That's how I decide if I am a true believing Christian in the word of God of what Jesus teaches us. So, you know, you could go to a church and if you're not reading the Bible and you don't know what it says and you're calling yourself a Christian, you might not even be a Christian because you're not obeying the commandments. Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. And that's how you decide if you're a Christian. So I wrote some things down today when I was, uh, before I came into the, to the studio. And I want to ask you guys from your opinion, being pastors for many years, dealing with a lot of young people, old people. You do a lot of counseling at, mm -hmm. at Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar as, yeah. as well. That's why I always love having you guys on the show because you see this constantly, day in and day out, where people are at. I don't think it's like, and I'm going to end with this before I ask you this question. You know, back in the older days, it felt like people like are more, were more Bible literate. Yeah, right? for sure. Right? For sure. Yeah. And um, now... It's way less of the basic, the basic truths of the Bible. People don't really know. It's because of that thing in your hand. It's, it's, a it's because, yeah, we don't have to go to the Word anymore. We go to the Internet and search a question out, and they'll give us, the world will give us its answer. And they take that for and they what take is that truth. For, they take that as gospel. Right. That's, that's the problem. Right. Okay, so what are the characteristics of a Christian? And then what is the difference between a Christian that has a relationship with God versus someone that just looks at like God, he's, he's, God in a, he's a genie in a bottle mm -hmm. where they just, you know, when they need help with finding a husband, finding a wife, 
uh, a job or maybe they've got a DUI or what, yeah. whatever it is. They just need help for God for that moment and they just rub the genie and go, God, help me. So what is the difference? Let's start with the characteristics of a, let's start with a, someone that calls themselves a Christian that is not a Christian. Like a Sunday morning Christian that comes to church, okay. he puts his 30 minutes in, here's the Bible study, and he goes out about his life the rest of the week, living the way he did before he even came into church. Well, I think that the, the thing that you started off with on, on the characteristics, that's connected with what you're saying right now. Uh, Jesus gave two ways how to identify a believer. O- only two ways. It's very simple. Uh, by the, the fruit that comes out of their life, when the Bible says fruit, all it means is that characteristics. Their actions. It's their actions, you know, because uh, the Bible, like, rebukes anybody that says, um, those that say that they are a hearer of the word, but they don't do it, they're not genuine, yeah. right? Their characteristics aren't being backed up. And then um, the other one was by their love for one another. Mm-hmm. Somebody that demonstrates love, because truly love is a symbol of, it's the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. It's the evidence of God doing a work in your life, the, the overpowering love that God has. So two things Jesus says, the love that you have for one another, two, by the fruit that's coming in your life, your characteristics. How's that played out practically? Mm-hmm. Um, if you are somebody that did drugs all the time, Drinking all the time, beating your, your wife, uh, committing adultery on your wife, and you have a transformation. There, there's a change that takes place in your life. That's becoming a Christian, being born again in the Holy Spirit. You, you recognize that that lifestyle, those characteristics mm-hmm. are against God. Mm-hmm. And you have this a conviction that takes place, and those things begin to change. You don't want to do those you things. You don't anymore. want to do those things. You have a conviction. It goes with a lot of things. Like things Is it that, like guilt? Like, you know, just like some, yeah. maybe someone, a listener, I'm yeah. playing the listener's role. Well, is it just because I feel guilty or yeah. what's, the, what's the change that takes place? So, so conviction, you could define it as guilt, as shame, as acknowledgement. I think all of us that grew up not knowing a relationship with God, you just lived a particular way. And maybe you felt guilty at times, mm. but then your desire to do those things outweighed your, how you felt, you know? But when you become a <clears> Christian... <throat> It flips over. It's just like in your heart, you just know it's wrong. And when you're God's doing a work in your life, you're, you're going through the Bible, you're going to a church that teaches the Word of God. So what should happen is it like happened to all of us. Like, it didn't happen overnight. There was definitely, I, I definitely had a dramatic conversion when God did a work in my life. I knew something had changed. But I'll tell you what, as the weeks and months went by, I'd be sitting on Sunday morning and then I remember, oh, wait, I still have a pipe up in my, my closet. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? I got that that porn that's in my my room. Like, and God starts putting those things in your heart, and you start to remove those mm-hmm. things. Um, the The other side is somebody that, hey, it's good for me to go to church. Like, you know, I think it's time I clean up myself, start going to church. But the characteristics are no different. They mm-hmm. think that going to church equates to being right with God. Mm -hmm. And going to church is really just a compliment of what God's already doing in your life. Mm -hmm. And your your dad has said often, a Sunday morning Christian is somebody that just comes on Sunday morning, they kind of do their time, they kind of punch in the the time Mm -hmm. clock. Mm -hmm. I did my... And that's almost like both of us kind of grew up with a Roman Catholic background, Mm -hmm. the same thing, where you kind of go through the whole process, you're sitting there, you say the same prayers, same kind of... Uh, speech, you sing songs, sing songs <laughs> you hold hands at the end, you say a particular prayer, you do the holy water, you take a knee as you, before you go into the uh, thing, but then you you go back and you just live however you want. I'm not so, saying everybody, but people get used to that kind of thing. I go to church, therefore mm-hmm. I'm doing right in my life. So that won't. So I'm going to play the devil's advocate like with our listeners. So yeah. well, that won't save anyone. You won't go to heaven, even if you go to church. Yeah. Every Sunday, your whole entire life, and you give money to the church, will you go to heaven? And 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 <laughs> what? And you're a good person. Yeah, you're a good person. Yeah, there's only one way to heaven, and that's being born again, the Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah. Simple a transformation. There's a lot of good people out there. There's a lot of good works. Jesus spoke about that about the rich young ruler that was much, you know, better than us. Like, mm-hmm. um, did all the right things. Yeah, did didn't right murder. Things. Didn't uh, lie. Didn't do any of these things. Like honored God. Um, but this one thing that you lack, you know, you, this is what's hindering you in your relationship with God. For each person, it's different. Mm-hmm. God wants our heart, mm-hmm. and I think all of us know when we play. 
The Bible talks about being a hypocrite, mm -hmm. pretending to be one thing on the outside when it's not genuine. And I know we can unpack this as the show goes on, but yeah. I think that one thing, Ryan, is like over the years, I have seen a lot of those people that they say the the brother this or the sister this and praise the Lord, brother, to the extreme. Mm -hmm. And it's it's hard. I know me and Scott, we <laughs> talked about it all the time. But your discernment just goes up when it's overboard uh -huh. because um, they're overcompensating. too many times I've seen it where I'm dealing with those same guys yeah. or I have this girl coming up to me <laughs> or this guy coming up to me, hey, so-and-so is doing this. Mm -hmm. They're still... They're committing adultery. They're, they're in a relationship right now. Mm -hmm. You know, they are doing this. What you see in person is not genuine. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that when you do that, you're not deceiving anyone but yourself because mm -hmm. you can't deceive God. Mm -hmm. And that which is genuine secret could be shouted from the rooftops. Nobody is perfect. Mm -hmm. There's no man that's perfect. You're not perfect. Mm -hmm. You're not perfect. Mm -hmm. um, but when you continue living a lifestyle that's against the will of God, uh, there should be a conviction that takes place. And uh, the biblical word for that is sanctification. All that means is it's a cleansing process that comes in our life. That's what we're kind of saying. Like you were once this way, smoking, you know, doing drugs, drinking, living sex of of this world, or whatever, you know, lying, cheating, all that to, to the extreme. God gets a hold of your life. Those things should start to be away from your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as that happens, that's what God does. He starts to cleanse you and wash you, and give you that new life. When you play church, you're never going to experience the grace of God, the peace of God in your life. And there's too many people that they don't get deep in a relationship with God, and then they miss out on, on so much of, of the benefits. Okay. Scott, mm. speaking of deep, how, how does one go deep with God? Because I've seen a lot of these people that you're talking about, we've seen them here, you know, come to the church, and they've... They've given their life to Christ, and then what happens is there's a point when they just they don't they don't take it to that next level, and then what happens is they just kind of fade away, mm -hmm. like the parable of the seeds. You know, I was just gonna bring that up. Yeah. Go ahead, go Actually, for it. You know, I, and I like that because Sean was saying there's two things, and and there's two things how you know a person's right with God if they're you know if they're listening to the word, they're they're basically doing what he, he says, mm -hmm. and you know them by their love. You know. Um, I would say, like, uh, when Jesus is talking about the parable of the sowers, he, he mentions four different kind of hearts, but only one of them is producing fruit. Mm -hmm. And I think it got, you have to, you have to, we have to analyze our own fruit. Uh, I was talking well, to what Sean. are the hearts? What are the four? Well, of the four hearts. So he, he talks about... Because I, I want this show, just for yeah, the sure, record, sure. I want this show so when the listeners are hearing, mm. they can look at themselves... Mm. And say, hey, is this me or is this right. me? And so people can walk away in freedom and go, no, I need to turn my life around and I need to get busy about God. Or maybe I'm this guy. I'm this guy. I'm hearing this truth and I'm this guy that he's talking about that's not a Christian, but no one's ever told me it. Yeah, right. So you, you know you know the parable. Yeah. Jesus talks about the parable in the Gospels and he's talking about the, the sower, mm -hmm. a guy who goes out and sows seed. Right. And as he's tossing the seed out, um, four, he, he tosses the seed on four different types of soil. Mm -hmm. One of it is it, it gets like it falls on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And immediately the birds of the air come and they swoop down, they eat the seeds, take it off. That thing doesn't get planted. Right. Then some fall on the side of the, the concrete, basically, of the asphalt, where you have like the dirt with the rock and, the, and it's very shallow soil. So it comes in and it, and it springs up and then all of a sudden it comes up real quick, you know. And people trample that one, you know. And then you have one that is like basically, uh, one gets sown into the dirt, but then there's weeds and stuff that get that get mixed in with it, mm -hmm. and it chokes out the good seed so that it basically overtakes it. Mm -hmm. And then he talks about the good ground, which, which brings about 30, 40, 100 fold. He who has ears, it to grows. Hear, he grows. Yeah. It actually bears a lot of fruit. Yeah. And so those four types of hard. One is the rock hard. The people that hear the gospel, like, ah, I don't. That was us before. I don't need that crap. Whatever. Yeah. That, that's not for me. Yep. The enemy's like, good, I got them where I want them. Mm -hmm. Then you got the hard soil guys. It, it, it digs in and they get emotional. They, they, they come up to the altar call 75 times, you know, and they're, mm -hmm. oh, I feel bad, I feel bad. Yeah, they feel regretful but not remorseful, not repentant. Mm -hmm. So they go up there, they respond to it, but then the cares of the, the, the Bible says that the heat of the, of the day burns up and it doesn't produce, it dies real quick. Mm -hmm. And then you have those that are sown in with the cares of the world. And that's what he talks about, the weeds mm -hmm are those things that they grow up right alongside the other plants. But the Bible says that the cares of the life choke it out so that it can't produce anymore. And those are people that have one foot in, mm 
mm-hmm. and one foot out. Yeah, I got my Sunday church. I'm good, but what we call carnal Christians. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they have their Christianity. They have their religion on Sundays, but then they're still doing whatever they want. And they care more about the things of the world than they do about the things of God. Mm-hmm. And then there's the last person that, like, their, their hearts are deep. Like you said, going deep. Their hearts have been dug out. And, and I think that's a daily thing. I, I, I relate this to like doing yard work at my house. Like there's, if you, and he knows, he has a yard too. Well, you, if you neglect your yard for a day or two or, or a couple of days, weeds, weeds go crazy. And I, I don't know about you, when I see a weed, I got to kill it. Mm-hmm. And I don't just pick it up and break <laughs> it off. I don't just break it off. Yeah. You get ask my kids, like, you get on my hands and knees, yeah. this little picker, and I get the root out, yeah. and there's, like, a satisfaction when I pull out this fat root. I'm like, yeah, because yeah. you know it ain't coming back. Yes. And I think for, and for me, I was just talking to him about this this morning, like, digging in my own heart, like, God, there's things that need to be dug out in me. Like, there's, there's things that you have to do. You have to do work, and you have to look at yourself in the mirror all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm deep, so I want that. I want to receive the nutrients of God. I want to bear more fruit. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the Bible says in John 15, that if, if, if a plant is bearing or a tree is bearing fruit, God will trim it back mm-hmm. in order for it to, to produce more fruit. I did that with an orange tree at my house, an apple tree at my house. I had to trim it way back, cut off dead branches. They're all kinds of fruit, but they're all small and nothing juicy. Got it. So you cut it back so that when it does produce fruit, it produces good fruit, mm-hmm. fruit that lasts. Right. And so when Jesus is using the illustration of that, that, that soil that needs to be fertile, He's saying it's ready to receive. It's been cultivated. The stones have been taken out, the hard things. Mm-hmm. You've gotten all the weed seeds out and all the junk that would, would pollute the seed when it does grow. That way when the seed does fall into good soil, it brings forth good fruit and it gets productive. And that's what Jesus is talking about. So talking to the listener out there, you know, are you the hard-hearted guy? It's like, I got my life. I'm good. I don't need God. Mm-hmm. Well, then Satan's already taken that seed out. It doesn't mean anything to you. Are you the one that like you you respond emotionally and you receive Christ right away at least at least verbally, but then there's been no follow up on it, yeah, so there's no been change. no no change whatsoever. You're the guy in the 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 hard you know rocky ground. Are you the one that is so concerned with worldly affairs that you don't have enough heart for the spiritual things? In other words, you're YOLO. You're living for the moment now, not thinking about what the eternity eternity and what's going to happen in the future. Mm-hmm then you're that person that, that has been choked out by the cares of the world. Mm-hmm. Or are you listening right now and going, I want to go deeper. All right, cool. If you're deeper and start doing some cultivation, start picking out some things. How do they do that? How, how do they cultivate? Self-analyzation through the word. And that, that sounded weird. That sounded psychological. Yeah. You look at the word, let it reflect in your heart, and then take it to account and go, dude, yeah, that's me. Like, Lord, like, you know, I need to change in this area. And, and so, Lord, I can't do it. So you change me, change my heart, change my mind, the way I think about things, the way I approach things. Mm-hmm. Take the word of God and just like apply it to our life. It's hard. You know how it is. Like mm-hmm. we all have our things, you know, like mm-hmm. whatever it may be. And it's like a daily thing. That's why when he's talking about, you know, like murdering the flesh, as you would say, mm-hmm. or, or reckoning the man to be dead, mm-hmm. it's a daily thing. Yeah. You know, the walk with God is not, I walked with God once. It's mm-hmm. I get up every day and I walk with him every mm-hmm. day. It's a mm-hmm. continual forward momentum. Mm-hmm. So just like, the, the daily looking at my heart, the daily cultivation and, and weeding out of my heart has to be a daily thing. Mm-hmm. It's like you're listening to studies or you're, listen, or you're reading your word and, and God's bringing things out. Like you're, uh, you know, God, God. Yeah, and it, and it makes you like, okay, do, God, deal with that. God, deal with that. And that's why yeah. I want to jump in really quick because I want yeah. you to continue. But people, people don't know what's wrong with them. I mean, there mm-hmm. are some things like, you know, obviously you're doing drugs and you're, you yeah. know, you're doing stuff that you know is not good. But what I've realized, as you guys all know, is that when you read the Word, which is the Bible, we're talking about the Holy Bible, Mm -hmm. and as you're reading it, the Word, when you read it, ask God, how are you going to speak to me? Mm. Not like, oh, this verse is good for so-and-so. Yeah. (laughs) You know, I need to send this verse to so-and-so. Like, look at the Word of God, read it, read through the chapters, read through the New Testament. Start in the New Testament if you're, you know, a brand-new Christian, get in John and just kind of read through the Gospels and then continue to Revelations. But um, when you read it, and then you could circle back to the Old Testament as well. But um, when you read it, you, things will stick, pop out to you. And mm-hmm. then when you read that, that's God speaking to you. And then you got to apply it to your life, mm-hmm. you know. And you're gonna mess up, yeah. but you, as you keep reading, then things will start changing as you keep applying. That's why you need to read it every day. It's not right. just like once a week. Mm-hmm. It's not you know once a month. It's not just on Sunday morning. Right. You have to know the Bible. Right. Because as you know, if we call ourselves Christians, and I've said this a hundred times before, and that means we're Christ-like. How do you become Christ-like? You got to know the Bible because the Bible is His words. 
Let me yeah. add something. This is really cool. Yeah. Yesterday I was teaching in the high school, and we're going through the Old Testament, and mm -hmm. we're going through 2 Kings, of all chapters, 2 Kings, chapter 22 and 23, and it talks about King Josiah, and he was like the last good king before they go into captivity mm -hmm. in the Babylon. And the guy was like, he, he kind of loved God. He had kind of like this, you know, religious, I love God thing, but he'd never read the word. And, and when they were digging through the temple, you know, like cleaning out the temple that had been messed up, one of his guys <laughs> comes across the law of God and he reads it and he's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like they got to read this. He takes it to Josiah and when he reads it before Josiah, he just like, he just comes undone. He rips his clothes. And he's like, that's what we're going to do. But then he has them go, he's all, inquire of God for me, what's going to happen? Because he, he had all these judgments that were coming against mm -hmm. Israel. They speak to a prophetess, and she says, hey, these things will surely happen. But because you heard the word of God, and you humbled yourself, and you tore your clothes, and you fasted, I'm not going to allow you to see the judgment that's going to upon you. He's like, I'm going to bless you during your life, but your, your children's wow, children. crazy. And then you know what he did? He went home, and he cleaned house. He went into the temple. He took all the astral poles, all the bow worship, mm -hmm. all the stuff. He just burned them straight up, burned them, grinded them up, threw them out in the water, like took them out. Then he called all the priests, all the priests that were in the high places and everything, took them out, like straight took them Killed out. Them, yeah. Killed all them, did away with all the idolatry worship. And then I was relating, like the Lord was speaking to me yesterday. He's like, that's what we need to do. Like we need to hear the word of God and it needs to like tear our heart. And then we need to go home and we need to like, clean house mm -hmm. we need a clean house we need to do work in our own heart where it's close to us first and then start doing work and then our nation and our people and our churches and our families will change like you have to take yeah. this stuff literally yeah and yeah. i think that's the issue that's going on um with 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 you know this, this christianity you know through through social media and in in different churches mm. like you literally have to be extreme mm. like if you can call it extreme you know being extremist but it's literally like you have to literally read it and you have to apply yourself. You have to apply it to your life. And you, that's the you, only you way. You always say punk rock gospel, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it is because you're going against the yeah. whole like, you're yeah. going against the world system. You know, I, I was just talking to, I don't know, I think it was my aunt the other day or something. And I was, or my wife too. I was like, you know, because you know, I'm a rebel, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, you know, and I'm like, you know, Crystal, I'm like, you know, you know, I'm a rebel, right? Like, obviously, you know, my characteristics, how I am, but I said, it's, it's, you know, I'm trying to be a good, I'm trying, to, I want to be a good Christian and I got to, I had to learn how to obey God, but I said, it's the rebel in me is actually a good thing right now because of the times that we're living in, mm. like the culture, mm. like you have to be able to fight against the culture in this time to stand or else you're just going to get, you're going to get plowed. Like mm. with the, the attack on, on God, the attack on Christianity, the attack on, on churches, Christians, everything that's going on. Like if you're just a little sissy, then basically you're going to get trampled and you're not going to, you're not going to be able to survive. And when you read the Bible, this is why we need to know the Bible. You could see that these men, they weren't like little, like they weren't like sissies. You know what I mean? Like you had King David, that guy was a man of war, mm -hmm. and, but he was a man after God's own heart. And you know, he made some big mistakes, mm -hmm. but he was a warrior. You know, and then even like the disciples, you know, how, how God used their life. I mean, they were with Jesus going from town to town. The Romans, you know, were trying to get their hands on Jesus to crucify him. And then on their great commission, they all died really gnarly deaths, you mm -hmm. know. And I'm not telling you, Chris, you know, you on the radio that you're going to die a, a horrible death. Maybe, I don't know, you know, but that's not what I'm, I'm trying to say here. What I'm saying is that, but they were willing to lay it on the line. For you have to be able yeah. to lay it. Exactly. You, hey, you can't just be yeah. a, a pushover or over Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah for Like sure. there's an attack on Christianity. We know that Satan's the prince of the world, and he's doing everything he can to destroy the minds of our kids. Mm. To destroy. I mean, just watch the news. What, look what's going on in schools. Yep. Look what's happening with these these drag queens and this they're sexualizing and pedophilia and all this crazy stuff. So now is the most important time to know. Where you stand. If you want to be a Christian, I forget the word you used. You just got to be all in. Mm -hmm. You, Sean, you said you got to go deep, and you need to know the word. You need to apply it to your life so God can speak to you and set you up where He wants you to be yeah. in this time. Mm -hmm. And I do want to add my my part uh, to this one thing with, with 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 what I've seen with Christians, and this is kind of a a scary thing to a scary place to be is like Christians that have growing up in the church, or maybe you've been around it, maybe you got saved when you were young, and you've been around it so long, but you stop, um, 
you stop listening to the Holy Spirit, to his promptings of like things that you need to get out of your life mm. and you're, you're degressing and you're going back to things that maybe you weren't involved with, sins that you weren't involved with before and now you're starting to do those sins mm. or you're going back to your old sins and you think that you're a Christian, you're going to church, you actually know the Bible, you can quote verses, you've been around these people. Yeah. They can quote verses, they are at church every Sunday, they're, oh, they're like religious and it's the, the, the gospel has, hasn't even had an effect on them anymore because their private life, they're totally living a, they're, they're living a du- total double standard. Yeah. And that's the thing that you have to be scared of because there are people that are in church and they can quote verses and revelations and the Old Testament and they know, they know all the stories, but yet the gospel has no power in their life. Mm. You've come across a couple of those guys, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I've been that guy before. You know, okay, well, you know before. what? We have four minutes. To talk, talk three minutes about being... That guy, just in case that you know, guy's listening. It, it, it is when you hear and don't do. That's when yeah. James says, he who is a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, that's not a good thing. And, and we can all get into those places, whether it be for five minutes or five days or five years or whatever. Mm. And it, it has to be one of those things where like, you know, because you can get dead to things after a while. You hear something and you're like, okay, okay, okay. Right. But then it, you think it doesn't apply to me. Right. Until you fall on your face. Mm-hmm. But then you get back up and go, like Peter, like, okay, God, I got, I got it now. Like what you were trying to say. You said I was going to re- deny you. You said I was going to do this, but I wasn't listening because I thought, that's not me. That's him. Mm-hmm. And when you fall on your face, then God's like, did you get it? I go, yeah, I got it. You know. And then you, you constantly look back at that and go, okay, I don't want to go there again. So you want to stay, you want to stay tuned into what he's saying to you and keep your heart sensitive. Yeah. How... Do you, how can you keep yourself in a place where you don't get? I forget the word you just said, but you don't. It doesn't. You don't just get numb to it. Mm. How do you stay in that place with God, where it's not? You're not just going through the motions. Yeah, you have to keep your ears open. You have to keep your spiritual ears and heart open. And like, when the when the Lord is repeating something to you over and over again, then it's like, okay, 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 I got it. And it's not just like I'll get it tomorrow. It's like mm. God, deal with my heart. Deal with my heart. Like me and my wife were talking about some stuff this morning. We were talking about some stuff yesterday. It's like these are things that we as individuals need to take to the throne of God and go, God, I can't change these things. I can't change this person. I can't change this situation, Mm -hmm. but you can. And then you pray accordingly, like, God, do this because I need this. I want this. I know you want it because you're bringing it up. Mm -hmm. Help me change this. Mm -hmm. Help me do this because I can't do it on my own. If we do it on our own, then then we don't need Jesus. We don't need God. We can do it on our own. Mm -hmm. Sean? No, I think um, everything that you just said, I know I just got a couple minutes left, but um, for this uh, side of the break, um, stir, you brought up Timothy, mm-hmm. and one thing that Paul said to Timothy is stir up the gifts that are in you, mm-hmm. and stir that up, is, that's an action that you've got to do. Mm-hmm. you you got to say, like, Lord, why have you called me? You pulled me out of darkness yeah. for a purpose. Because when somebody wants to grow in a relationship with God, you tell them four things. Read your Bible, go to a church that teaches the Word of God, and... Um, Fellowship. read your Bible, pray, go to a church to teach the Word of God, and share your faith. Mm-hmm. All four of those things are going to activate you in a, being in a successful life as a believer. You neglect one of those things, you fall. You stop praying, or you stop reading, or you stop sharing your faith, because what that does is it shows you, man, God is using me. Like mm-hmm. The Word comes out mm-hmm. of you. You're able to impact lives, because the enemy is a deceiver. He, he wants to lie to us, and before you know it, he can just overwhelm you. Yeah, I was going to add to what Scott was saying is that you have to be active. Mm-hmm. And active is basically stirring up the gift, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. what God's doing inside of you. You have to be active doing something or else you're just religious. You're going to the church, and we've heard this from the, from stages before. It's like, you know, there's a lot of people that are in this Sunday morning church or go to these churches that are getting fat off the word of God. They're big fat cows. They're basically, they know the word. They know it all, but yet they're not up going out and doing anything mm-hmm. with it. Yeah. So you're not doing anything. You're just knowing the word. So that's why, and, and where it gets exciting with your faith is when you're praying and you're asking God to open up doors and do stuff with you, and he does stuff. And that's when it gets exciting. And then that's a yeah. snowball effect. Yeah. That is a snowball effect of how he starts using you and then where he ends up taking you. And that's a whole nother level. But we're going to wait to the next break to continue talking about this stuff.
Cool. Uh, let me just say this real quick, uh, just a few seconds. Make sure that you um, follow us at Ryan Reese on YouTube to follow all the next episodes. And make sure you book the Whosoever's at thewhosoever's.com for more booking in your area. we got more things to share with you right after the break. More of The Ryan Reese Show coming up. Post your questions at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook. We are living in the middle of a serious mental health crisis. Unfortunately, we're now seeing spikes in mental health hospitalizations, especially with kids. And doctors are now calling it the new crisis that we all need to worry about. Studies show that too much time on social media apps can be linked to anxiety and depression. It's dark and sometimes invisible, this epidemic of suicide is a major public health concern and is among the leading causes of the leading causes of death in the United States. With all of the noise from social media, video games, TV, pornography, sexuality, and gender confusion, this generation is becoming one of the most confused generations of all time. Each year, one in five females and one in seven males engage in self-harm. 90% of people who engage in self-harm begin during their teen or pre-adolescent years. How can we put an end to this ever-increasing noise that is plaguing our youth around the world? What is the answer? The answer is Jesus. lost and broken generation with truth, hope, and love by delivering the gospel message. We aim to empower all to realize that they are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, and when you trust in Him, you can live out your amazing God-given purpose that He has for your life. How can you book the whosoevers? Contact us today to find out how you can bring the tour to your city at info at the whosoevers.com. How can you partner with us to spread the gospel message? Please donate and become a monthly partner and help us reach the next generation with the gospel message. Now, back, back to the Ryan Reese Show. All right, we are back. I have Scott Salman and Sean McKeon in studio. And I don't know if you've heard the first half of the show, but it was amazing to have these two guys in the show. These guys are breaking it down. They're pastors over at Calvary Chapel, Diamond Bar, Raul Reese's Church, which was my father. And uh, they, we were just breaking it down. We were, we were talking about, I wrote a bunch of questions down this morning, and we only got through one question I think I have. But it was a good one. It was uh, a good question. Yeah, I think I have like 13. But anyway, it doesn't matter because it was impacted so well. I was just talking about the difference characteristics between a Christian versus a, uh, uh, someone that calls himself a Christian that may come to church on Sunday morning, put their time in their, you know, they come through the motions, you know, they show up, I go every Sunday, I listen to the worship, I sing the songs, I listen to the message, I pray, and now I'm a Christian, but they don't apply it to the life. And we really broke it down because I believe as I'm watching social media, I'm traveling, I'm talking to people, I'm seeing what's going on, and I'm talking to people in different churches around the world. And there's a lot of people that are calling themselves Christians, but they're not really living what Jesus would say that you are living the Christ, the Holy Spirit life, the Spirit led life as a Christian. So go to our YouTube channel and get the show if you want to hear. It was a 30-minute breakdown of what a Christian is, what a true Christian is versus someone that calls themselves a Christian. But, Sean, you had a couple announcements really quick that you forgot at the first half. Yeah, you know, with all that's taking place with the whosoever's and, and Ryan for the for the YouTube, that's where the show is. And there's so many great archives there. We encourage you to, to um, listen to them, share them with your loved ones and friends, and kind of spread the word because we are always talking about 
new content. Ryan has a lot of new guests as well. And the Whosoever's, as it has for many years now, has been able to travel the nation, but also just got back from South America a little bit ago. They have opportunities outside. And so, number one, if you want to book the Whosoever's, go to whosoever's.com, book, and just get very simple, put in your info, and we will get back to you. But also, the, um, the Whosoever's, um, is able to do the things that we're able to do because of the love and the support of so many. Number one, we need your prayer, um, but also we encourage you to be a monthly donor to the whosoever's. Uh, what that does is it allows them to go into the high schools because high schools can't really fund themselves. You know, mm, there's no kid, money high in, in high schools and junior high schools. Um, but we go out by faith, but we give people the opportunity. You see the need that's taking place in the world. We're taught, we see suicide. We see this confusion that's in the, the high school and the junior high level. Level, and it gives the guys opportunities to be able to travel to all these various de destinations. So your support, your donations go right back into the movement to impact many people for the gospel of Christ. And that's a great way you can be involved. But also um, go to the whosoever's and go into the product. They have so much banging, uh, great apparel from hats to accessories to sweatshirts, to shirts, all those kind of things. And what it does is it kind of puts the, the name out there as well. It's, it's a great tool in a lot of yeah. ways too and it's great product it, so that's a great way to support it. it'll start conversations mm. and it's also a way to fundraise as well yep. product with a purpose yep. exactly yes. so yep. yeah and you know we got we go globally from australia we just got invited to uh um Aust uh where philippines the doors just opened the mayor just said that uh pastors can come in and they want spiritual influence on their students because everyone got wrecked in covid yeah. Yeah, we were yeah. just in chile uh same thing uh, you know, we're in Colombia, Peru, all over the United States, Central California, no Northern California, um, East Coast, West Coast, just everywhere. I mean, that's what it's all about. We do about 100 schools a year. That's our average. It's about close to 97 to 100 schools a year. And we're going into the high schools. There's no money in the high schools, uh, unfortunately. But that's the battleground. Yeah. And that's where it all starts. Obviously, if you're watching the news, the, the Who Stores movement is the most important right now. For us to get there and let them know that God loves them and has a plan for them. Yeah. Right. As we transition to whatever other question you have, I want to add on something right there from the beginning yeah. as well, if you don't mind. Um, one thing that Scott brought up, you gave that breakdown about like your yard, the grass, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Dude, that's such an amazing like kind of uh, illustration um, because as we're talking about how to grow in a relationship with God, it doesn't just come overnight. Like, when you look at the, the term disciple of Christ, yeah. what, the word disciple is connected to the word discipline. It takes somebody that is invested. It's not just going to just happen. You have to be consciously, I'm going to serve God today. Mm. I'm going to pray. Because the other end, we talk about the grass, when you don't water your grass, you don't take care of your grass, weeds come out right away. Is it crazy if you see um, houses that are going into foreclosure or nobody takes care of it? They can have weeds all over the place. How does that happen? By doing nothing. Mm -hmm. By doing nothing at all. Mm -hmm. Weeds will come and produce. Yep. But to have a good yard, grass, you know, everything's kind of lined up, it takes effort. It mm -hmm. takes discipline to see, oh, man, this is off, and I got to fine-tune that. Same thing with somebody that has yep. a relationship with God. Like, it doesn't just come overnight. Somebody that, has, that knows a word that's coming out of their mouth and you see their life change, it comes from disciplines happen in their life where prayer is a priority in their life when they wake up. They, they recognize they need God. Reading the Bible, they do it with a purpose. Going to church is a purpose. It's not just going through the motions. Mm -hmm. And somebody that wants the fruit of it, they want the results of what somebody like that has, but they don't do it. They don't read. They don't pray. They don't do any of those things. Same as that yard that's filled with weeds, their life will be full of weeds, full of compromise, full of confusion when you just don't do nothing spiritually. I like the way how you threw that out there because when you really look at someone's life visually, that house illustration, mm -hmm. when, you're, when you see someone that's walking with God and they're, you know, not perfect, obviously no one's yeah. perfect, but they're, they're, they're disciplined and they're, 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 uh, their life's in order. It's like if you look at a house, it's like in order. It's like, it's like you know, yeah. it looks nice. You know, everything's cut, the grass, everything looks, it, their life is in order. Right, mm -hmm. you could see that in someone's life. God, don't judge me by my front yard. <laughs> <laughs> but but when you look at someone's life, yeah. and it doesn't matter if it's a two million dollar home or yeah. a hundred thousand dollar home, if it's in order, it's in order. Yeah. Versus if it's all weeded and overgrown or whatever, right. a two million dollar home or, or a 
a hundred thousand dollar home, mm -hmm. it looks in shambles. And mm -hmm. that's literally a great picture of someone's yeah. life that is following God and is a disciple versus a non-disciple. Yeah. Doesn't matter how rich you are or poor you are. Mm -hmm. You know, that's basically how your life looks. And that is an awesome illustration. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna ask this question, which is gonna be pretty a uh, pretty short answer, which is gonna lead in to my last question for us to close the show. Because now we talked about what is a Christian versus someone that calls himself Christian uh, looks like. So now, as we look around, um, what have you seen? Like, how, how have you seen Christianity evolving? in through social media because you know obviously everyone looks at social media right yeah. and you're hearing these pastors and preachers or you know mm -hmm. teach how is it evolving now in churches globally and through social media the messaging are you seeing like uh the the message of of the actual bible being watered down is it more like fuzzy feeling um is there people that are de deconstruction their faith like what are you seeing so someone now that's listening and they're plugged into a church, how can they know if they're in the right church? Like, what is a good, what, we're gonna talk about doctrine after, okay. but how can they tell if they're in the right place from what their pastor's teaching? What are you seeing trending? And what should they be looking for? You know, I, I will say this because I think it needs to be said, and people think that they, I, I don't like going to that church because every time I leave that church, I feel bad about myself. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's mm -hmm. a good thing. If the Why is that good? Because, uh, you know, like, for instance, people always use the, ex the excuse that, uh, you know, I think man wrote the Bible because I'm, if man wrote the Bible, we would have made ourselves out to be rock stars. But if you look at man through the prism of the Bible, we're a bunch of losers mm -hmm. and complete failures. Yeah. So you know God wrote it. He was pointing out our flaws. So if you go to a church and they're preaching the word, and sometimes you come out of there feeling like, man, God is amazing. You should always leave the church saying God is amazing. We should always have a, a deep, a deep sense of like, man, God, that that really, that really pricked my heart. That really jacked me up. Like, there's some areas in my life I need to work on. I'm not saying that you go to a church that's always just beating people down, but you should go to a church that has a balanced teaching. Like, they're they're teaching about the love of God, but along with the love of God, they're talking about the righteous judgment of God at the same time. They're talking about a right relationship. Grace and truth. Grace and truth. They're talking about a right relationship with God, and they're talking about you know, doctrine and teaching, but they're also talking about how to apply the doctrine and the teaching to your life. So there's a balance there. There yep. always has to be a balance. They're big on evangelism, mm -hmm. but they're not overly, you know, they're not only just doing strict teaching where, like they said, people are just sitting there getting big and fat. They're not challenging the people. Mm -hmm. There has to be a combination. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, I, I, I'm not going to sit there and say that our church is the one church because there's a lot of amazing churches. I, I, I want to I add one thing because yeah. I know you're going to continue. Yeah. So, like, grace and truth, the way it works, people, is, like, you should hear stuff that makes you feel uncomfortable from the stage. Yes. Like, s about stuff and sin in your life that you That's need to change. That's the truth, yeah. But there shouldn't be, that guy on the stage shouldn't be, like, you know what, and if you're doing this, you're going to go to hell, and this and that, you're a bad person, blah, 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 and you better get right. He's, he needs to tell you, yeah. Like, sin leads to hell, okay? We know right, that. absolutely. But he should say, but guess what? This and this, yeah. if you're doing this and this, mm -hmm. it get, it's against God. And the wages of sin lead to death. They lead to hell. But guess what? Jesus. God loves you. Yeah, Jesus. And yeah. he'll forgive you. And right. all you have to do is ask for forgiveness, and you'll be forgiven right now today. Mm -hmm. And you need to change. But it shouldn't be a bunch of fire and brimstone, and you walk out feeling bad, like, oh, my exactly. gosh, I'm never going to arrive. Yeah. Exactly, right. Right, so just so they know. Yeah, no, no, and, and I agree, and I'm thank, thankful that you said that. So, it, again, it, it comes down to, like, conviction of the Holy Spirit, and now conviction should lead to repentance, which means active mm -hmm. uh, change and transformation of my heart, and that's that's the area where we fall short. Like, God, this is an active thing. Like, I want to change. So... You show me what I got to do, and then you do the rest. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because 99% of it is just a submission thing, and the rest is just God just doing what he does And naturally. that's the hardest it's part, the submission. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the submission part, right. Sean? I think that the number one thing is a, a church, if you know you're in the right church, that they have a high priority on the Word of God. Mm. Because we are in a battle for truth in the days that we're living mm. in today. Right? Yeah. We talk about social media and its power. Yes, there is power, and we can we you all use it in some form or another. But the danger of social media and media as a whole is that perception outweighs truth mm. in so much stuff. Mm. Perception outweighs truth. What do I mean by that? Um, because on the internet or on social media, somebody can make themselves be perceived as amazing looking, right? Uh, but in reality and truth, 
That might not always also be the case. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying. And there's a lot of areas. Photoshop. Right? There's some people that they go too extreme. A lot of filters. Hey, yeah. They go too extreme on eyelashes and, and lips to the extreme. And maybe on a photo and angle-wise, it looks good. But in person, they look like a freak show. Yeah. And I, now we're, I'm talking about physical stuff, yeah. but there's a flip over when it comes to spiritual stuff and everything as well. Yeah. As well, yeah. Yeah. They can be perceived, perception outweighs truth in a lot of people because they can be perceived, oh, that's an amazing couple. Mm. They got everything going on. They look so happy, mm. you know? And so because our culture has been so influenced by this mode, like, but it's not reality, you know? And in, in churches... They too, and in some churches that are off, perception outweighs the importance of truth in a lot of ways. Um, they don't want to offend anybody, so they don't touch any subjects that might offend the culture. Um, but we, and that's why you have to be able to to have a good balance of a church that isn't afraid to teach the word of God. It's seasoned with grace and truth. Go ahead, Ray. What do I you want to say? I want to have you unpack something you just yeah. said. People in some churches, they don't want to teach certain parts of the word of God. Yes. Because they don't want to offend people. Yeah. So if you're not teaching the whole Bible, yeah. the Word of God, what happens to the person coming to the church that's listening if they're not hearing the whole Bible? Mm -hmm. it's, it's just like anything. If you are sick, <laughs> the, another illustration physically. Mm -hmm. If you are sick and ailing and have a disease, you have something like it's a problem. It's showing you you have a problem. Your body is giving like alarms. Yeah, I got pain here. I got this. You go to the doctor. And the doctor gives an assessment of your life and like, hey, you got cancer. Hey, you have this. And then you're like, no, I don't want to hear that. You don't get the medicine to fix it. You're not going to be made well. Yeah. The same is true with spiritual things. Um, when somebody speaks the truth of like sin will lead you to hell. Yeah. Continue living a lifestyle of this is going to destroy your life. God had made, um, created man and, and woman differently no matter what culture around you might say. The Bible says that God formed you when you're in your mother's womb. God honors life. And that is why when you go to the levels of abortion or you go against um, a culture that is b battling with the transgender confusion and um, homosexuality, all these things, it's not that we are against the people or hate the people. It is that these are sins that we are, are dealing with. And it might be uncomfortable to hear that, but it's the only way to leap to be brought to a place of, of peace and truth. Sometimes the truth hurts, mm -hmm. you know, and just like if you, you cut yourself and have, you know, as a kid, you get a you know, bike accident or whatever, and you throw in alcohol, man, it burns. But what does it do? It's healing. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is true. Like when you're being taught the word, it makes you feel uncomfortable. Maybe, maybe you even feel angry when somebody's speaking truth. Mm -hmm. But that's the only thing that's going to bring healing it, to your it's life. Like, it's like if you go to a church that's not giving you the truth, mm. and you say you go and you have your arm cut off. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you just get your arm cut off, and you're in, you're in the dirt, right? And you have dirt in your yeah. cut off arm. And you go to the church, and and or you go to the doctors, and they're like, yeah, so, um, yeah, you're, you you know, just, you'll be fine. Just uh, go ahead and take some Tylenol, and uh, you're, you're going to be, you're going to be fine. And just keep <laughs> coming back, and yeah. that's like the church. Like, you come. But really, what's going to happen is, you're getting an infection mm -hmm. and you're gonna die. Yeah. But they're not telling you. They're just, oh, just take some time off of the pain and you're you're gonna be you're gonna be all okay. good. They're 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 not telling you the truth and that's what's important. Why you have to go to a church that actually teaches the Bible, yeah. not just all this topical stuff or whatever. Because right. they're just if, if 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 it's all topical all the time and there's no Bible teaching, you don't learn the Bible, then you're not gonna you're gonna hear what that pastor is. What he's like excited about, yeah. right? And and stuff that he likes and he could teach well or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like we've all taught stuff. It's very easy to teach certain passages, mm -hmm. right? But if you go through the Bible, like we believe in Calvary Chapel, Genesis to Revelations, you have to hit every subject. Mm -hmm. And every subject is gonna come with truth, and then you're gonna full, have the full counsel and you'll know. And that's why it's important to have sound doctrine. Let's talk about doctrine. Yeah. Why what is doctrine? Doctrine is sound teaching. Um, it, it, is, it is proper and sound uh, theological teaching according to the God, Word of God. How do you get, because okay. there's, 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 yeah, there's, how there's do you a small, get sound a, a doctrine? Very, a very simple formula, what we, what we follow here is, if it's not found taught in the book of Acts and in the Gospels or anywhere in the Old Testament, then it's probably not biblical and it's not doctrinal. And that's not taking out of 
context. Like, oh, yeah, you know, they said, and they, they all fell over. He said, Jesus, and they all fell over. So yeah. that's a doctrine. No, that's not, that's not anyone doing that. That was Jesus doing. He had the authority of God. And he spoke in the No one else back. did that but Jesus. It, but Jesus. And so, you know, and so then people want to say, well, if he did it, I can do it. Right. So it has to be taught in the word of God, okay? It has to be sound biblical teaching. It's been, it's been taught in the book of Acts, the book of gospel, or the gospels. Epistles. And he, I'm sorry, and the and epistles. And the epistles. epistles, I'm sorry, yeah. yeah, the epistles. And so when you find that, because those are the teaching, those are the doctrinal teachings. When you find it in there nine times out of ten, it's going to be consistent teaching. It's going to be something that the church embraces as a normal doctrine, normal teaching, and something that's relevant to to the spiritual growth of not only the individual but also the church. That's a that's a sound doctrinal teaching. Okay. And how so? How do you get false doctrine? Like, let's what, what are some false doctrine? So you the, go ahead. Sean. Well, I think a lot. So I am. Um, how does someone thing, look, look for false doctrine? Well, I would say this. Again, everything's linked to truth. If you want to understand if you are in a a good church or sound church always look at the, the belief statement. What do they believe? Um, some of the key things that you should look for. Number one, what is, and I said this a minute ago, what is their understanding of the Word of God? Mm -hmm. The reliability of the Word of God. That has to be your barometer. Mm -hmm. If they say any kind of watered-down kind of statements, taking away the validity and the, the authorship mm -hmm. of, of the Lord, then you're in problems. Two, the deity of Jesus Christ. What mm -hmm. I mean by deity, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. They, you can't, as other religions would say, oh, or, or the Mormons say, the brother of, of Lucifer, uh, for the Muslim faith, um, one of the prophets, mm -hmm. they don't discount that Jesus was real, but they take away his, his deity. Mm -hmm. And under that, these are major this, uh, the, and then also the work of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. that, that the work of the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, God the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. um, sin, sin is real, sin separates you from God, you and I are all born in sin, mm -hmm. we all have children, you don't have to teach your children how to lie, you have to teach them how to tell the truth, because they are born with a sinful nature, mm -hmm. um, and then salvation, how is somebody saved? And I brought that up of Christ. That, those, mm -hmm. those, that's the main thing. As the Bible says, it's might not be popular in culture, but it's true. Jesus is the only way to salvation. Those are some of the key barometers. I mean, there's other stuff, end time stuff, and people differ in opinions on some things there. But the basic ones, that's yes. very yeah. important. And that will build you with a foundation. Okay, that church is right on. They put a high priority on the Word of God. They say Jesus is the Son of God. They believe in the work of the Holy Spirit. They believe in sin, salvation. You know, have a pretty good foundation. If you're in a church and it feels weird, it's probably because it is weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, church should not be uh, weird. Mm -hmm. uh, whatsoever. And yes, the teaching of the Word of God. It's like, and you have to know, you have to know doctrine and you have to know the Bible because, you know, you have this whole movement now with uh, Mormons calling themselves Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, I had this Mormon post recently from a social media post I did and they're like, we believe in Jesus. It's not the same Jesus. No. You know, because, you know, the Mormons believe like in the spiritual sons mm -hmm. and uh, they believe Lucifer was a spiritual uh, brother of, 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 of Jesus, Jesus yeah. and you know, they don't... They that, don't that, their theology's off. Their yeah, theology is really, really wacky. So even I've, Jehovah's, I've Witness, Jehovah's Witness will say the same thing. Yep. You know? Mm -hmm. so yeah, that. I had some conversations with them. And, you know, definitely know that Jesus of the Bible is a whole different Jesus than, than what these guys believe, mm -hmm. you know? Amen. So, because they'll be like, I believe in Jesus. And I go, no, you got to know doctrine and theology. You know what I mean? If you mm -hmm. want to know... The Jesus that we're talking about, and, and I will say this too: simple theology is actually because before, I, before, yeah, before yeah. I ever read, you know, theology books, or whatever, I read through the Gospels and I was reading through the Book of Acts, and certain things were so clear to me. And then I would hear your dad when I first started going to Calvary Chapel West Community, hear him talk about. It. I'm like, dude, that's what I believe, and I knew I was right on. Yeah, his book on doctrines, by the way, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm plugging his book. Yeah, it's the simplest, most awesome book, and I've given out like hundreds of those things. Mm -hmm. They're super cheap, super concise, and it's for boneheads like us. Yep. It's an amazing book on I need doctrines. To read, I want to yeah. read that one again. It's really, really, it really good. I read it a long time ago. Yeah, um, it's a great book. Very, very important. He has a bunch of good books out, mm -hmm. right? Didn't he just drop a new book? Mm -hmm. what's, that, what's the new book? Yeah, it's a uh, breakdown of the Sermon on the Mount, mm. which is from Matthew chapters 5 through 7. So yeah. when you think of Sermon on the Mount, those are key things, like uh, what the Bible says about adultery, 
murder and just living, as we were saying in the beginning of this, the Christian life. Jesus mm -hmm. gives a breakdown of what the Christian life looks mm -hmm. through, and your dad kind of did a whole breakdown through the Sermon on the Mount. So, Yep, and that is the importance of uh, theology, doctrine, mm -hmm. you philosophy. Know, philosophy. Bio, yeah, philosophy is good. It's the way you do ministry, because mm -hmm. then you won't end up in some wacky, crazy things, and everyone's falling all over the place, and it's speaking in tongues, and it gets weird. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen that in, in a couple places. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, this just doesn't feel like God's here. Everyone's like bringing attention to themselves mm -hmm. when the Holy Spirit was moving. But now we forgot about the Holy Spirit. And now we're just looking at everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, 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 so, the, there's a freak show. The greatest way to detect false teaching is to know the truth. You've heard that say be mm -hmm. said before, right? Yeah. Chuck uh, said people that. that want to uh, identify counterfeit money, people that know money well, they know the feel, the touch the thickness and all that kind of stuff because they handle it so much. That's real. Mm -hmm. That That's real. So when you know the truth, you can be able to find the falseness. Amen. Right? There's people like online that will try to sell stuff. I, somebody showed me, uh, somebody, you know, uh, Jordans are very expensive, right? Mm -hmm. People get all into the, the high-end things. And then if you go to like a wacky website and somebody orders them, and they're like, man, this is an amazing price. They get them. <laughs> you get them. They, they don't, they're not leather. They're like rubber. They're yeah. like plastic, right? Yeah. It's a, a false thing. Well, you know because you've touched the real. You're like, that's not genuine. And that's what the same thing that happens with, yeah. with the Word of God. When you know the foundational principles, the doctrine, and like those words sometimes like trip us out. Like, what's doctrine? Like, I, mm -hmm. I, I suck at school. All it means is teaching. Doctrine mm -hmm. is just teaching. Those basic teachings of the Bible, and then you put it in comparison with the yeah. things that are false. That's so funny you said that because I was listening to Chuck the other day, and he was talking about the word doctrine. He's like, without wax. Remember he was using yes. that word? Like, they used to, like, break a nose off a, of a statue, and oh. they, would, they would mix the dust in with wax, and mm -hmm. then they'd stick it back on. They would look good. They'd paint it, and then also on a hot day, the nose would slide off. Mm -hmm. So he's like, sound doctrine means having, like, a teaching and a principle and a philosophy that is without wax. Like, it doesn't have something that's fake in it. It's going to stand up, yeah. And uh, speaking of that, fake, I was just going to say right after Sean that, you know, a good thing to, to know is when you read the Bible and you're going to churches, if you don't see in the Bible, then, and, and a lot, you know, that's a good way to find out if you're in the right church. Mm -hmm. If it's not in the Bible, don't believe it. Don't, don't go with it. But you have to know the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, I taught this last Sunday at the at the church on the, the message called the All-Knowing all God, mm -hmm. the Omniscient God, basically what, who God is. And I had this one quote in there that God showed me when I was putting the message together is, read, pray, and obey. Because a lot of people just say, read and pray, read and pray, read and pray. But you could be a Sunday morning Christian and you can come, you could read, you could pray, but if you don't obey, you're not a disciple. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, you got to turn from your selfish ways, pick up your cross, and follow me you got to turn from your body appetites daily, and that's where the transformation comes through the work of the Holy Spirit. So read the Bible, Genesis and Revelations, pray, which is talking to God, and obey. When you obey means you're applying the Word of God, what you're reading, to your life. Mm. And it's that simple. Mm. All right, let's, let's go ahead and plug what we got with the Whosoever's before we close the show. Yeah, just a, a few things. Number one, uh, make sure you go to the Ryan Reese on YouTube, be able to uh, keep up to speed with all that's taking place with the show. But also, Ryan's book came out last year, and we encourage you, if you want to book Ryan as well, uh, you can go to, to his website too at ryanreese.com. Uh, the Kill the Noise book, it will impact you in great ways. A lot of stuff. Donate to the Whosoever's. Be a monthly donor. So many great things. We love you guys so much, and we'll see you next week. Peace. This has been The Ryan Reese Show. To connect and find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for The Ryan Reese Show. 